I think technology had a major role to play in helping AquaPower achieve their uh, low rate of 5.8 cents per kilowatt hour. The fact that the thin film technology has a higher energy yield in hot desert climates had a, had a huge impact. Uh, to give you an example, if you take an existing solar power plant with a levelized cost of electricity and you consider 5% extra energy uh, for the same power plant, that could give you roughly up to 20% play in terms of the price you can afford to pay for the module technology itself. So really for First Solar, it was an easy sell, having demonstrated the value of the technology at Diwa 13, which is phase one of the Diwa uh, Sheikh Mohammed uh, Solar Park. And that helped really demonstrate that the extra energy would facilitate achieving the financial model metrics for AquaPower and for Diwa and for First Gulf Bank. Really, it comes down to uh, maybe three main uh, selection criteria when it comes to selecting technology. Number one, track record. I think uh, we as First Solar were fortunate enough to have uh, built the largest solar power plants in the Middle East. We've built the 13 that's already been operational for two years, and now we're currently building uh, Shams Ma'an in Jordan at roughly 53 megawatts. So um, developers, EPCs, uh, financiers look for a track record and we were able to achieve that aside from the fact that we have about 10 gigawatts uh, worldwide. The second thing really when it comes to selecting technology, you have to look at the, uh, the certification and testing uh, validation of that technology. Uh, there are IEC norms, UL standards that everybody pretty much go through, but uh, Developers that are keen at reducing the risk really look at additional testing requirements. For example, you have the program by the Fraunhofer looking at the reliability of different photovoltaic technology, which we have gone through. There are additional tests beyond IEC and UL that can really differentiate one technology from the other. For example, Atlas 25 plus that we've gone through as well as another uh, benchmark, accelerated aging testing, long-term sequential. So I think that there is a myriad of tests that uh, differentiate one technology from the next. And thirdly, when it comes to uh, solar technologies, you really have to tie the selection of the technology to the site where that technology would perform. It comes down to the energy yield that we have talked about. So uh, track record, uh, testing and certification, and the performance of technology for the site at this project specific, I think uh, those are the main selection criteria. I think it's fair to say that Meta Project has been able to achieve a very leading uh, position in terms of being the premier event of uh, really bringing in uh, project finance, developers, EPCs, and most importantly, off-takers and government into, into one room or one place. Uh, I've been very impressed with the level of uh, people attending, the, uh, the topics selected I, th I think have been really on mark and it's, it's, uh, it, I think it's fair to say that Meta Project is, is a really an event to, to uh, watch out for every year. Um, I think really deciphering some of the uh, ambiguities around how did the whole deal come together for DIWA 200 and how uh, was Aqua able to achieve uh, the low rate that they have achieved, which is really a record uh, without any additional government subsidies. And I think uh, emphasizing on the value of the, uh, the role of project finance and the value of the technology selection, the energy yield, and how those two can come together, ad added to that O&M, and EPC, of course, uh, can really uh, validate uh, arriving at that figure.